Hello guys, in this video we'll learn about the three tier architecture of Git. So let us start with the video. Now I want to imagine that uh, suppose you have a software developer which I'm sure some of you might be one. What would you want? Now uh, suppose you create a folder and you created a user interface in that folder. You had an index.html file index.html file in this folder maybe one folder for static assets static assets so we have two folder uh, one file and a folder within this outer folder now i suppose there is one javascript file as well so one dot js file so it is possible that sometimes you will make changes to your javascript file and at other times you will be making changes or you will be working on index.html file. Let us assume that this is the first version that you will be working on. So let me term this as version 1. So this is the very first version of the file that you are working on. And this is the first version of your interface. Now at a later stage you may want to add more complex functionalities to the interface like suppose a chat functionality from where you can chat with other users suppose this you want to implement in a version 2 but not in version 1 this functionality is a later functionality it's a add-on to the version 1 okay so you may want to add complex functionalities to the interface like this chat functionality so users can interact with one another you may want to launch your product in the market so you would have to continue working on to improvise this version 1 to reach to subsequent versions okay currently you are working on version 1 eventually you will go to version 2 and then more improvisations you will lead to a final version now suppose you are working on this version which is the version 1 of the interface to improve it and suppose accidentally you made errors in it okay you made some errors in one of your files so you cannot revert back to the previous versions if you are using something called as manual version controlling manual version controlling rollback is not feasible not feasible rollback is not possible in case of manual version controlling okay so you cannot roll back or revert back to the previous versions by revert i mean uh, i mean that you are unable to roll back to the previous version which though was incomplete but it was in the working condition okay it didn't had any errors but now in your current version suppose you are having errors so you are not able to roll back to your previous version if you are using manual version controlling okay so what to do in that situation so what possibly you can do is that you can take a snapshot of the first version so this is your first version which had an index.html file static assets .js file this was your version 1 so i want to take a photograph or a snapshot of the first version that I made and you freeze the situation in which it was before those changes were introduced that uh, added on some errors in the version 1 at the very first place. So what this would help us in is that you will be able to easily roll back to the previous version if any errors get introduced. So if we make a snapshot of this, the version that was working flawlessly and if by some chance we introduce some errors in this version 1 okay so we can roll back to the previous changes to the previous version that was working flawlessly if we had made a snapshot for the first version okay so this snapshot thing is very important you can relate this snapshot thing to take a photograph which you take to capture a moment now we want to capture this situation and want to save it now this capturing of situation can be termed as a commit so snapshot can be termed as a commit 
So this thing is called a commit saying that this is the working version one and you're saving the state for the version one by making something called as commit. So when you make a commit, you are saving the changes that you made in version one, which was working flawlessly. So you committed that and you will only add those files that are working flawlessly. Okay. So even if you introduce some changes in the subsequent versions, you will be able to roll back to your previous uh, flawless working version. Okay. So now uh, this capturing of situation, as I told you, is termed as commit in the context of git. So what you can do is you can make a commit saying that this is the working version one and you are saving the state for the version one by making a commit. Now let us suppose we proceed further on improving our user interface. Our user interface currently has index.html file, a JavaScript file, say some CSS files or static assets. Now assume that the index.html file that you're working on for the design is absolutely according to what you had planned in the first place. But suppose while you were working on the JavaScript file, you accidentally added some changes that you do not want it to make. So in this situation, what would you like to do? You accidentally added some errors that led to some blunder. Okay. So what would you like to do in that situation? So in that case, since we know that index.html file is working fine and even all the asset files like CSS files, they are working fine. So what we can do here is we will add the index.html file as a commit in our second subsequent snapshot, but you will not, I again repeat, you will not commit the JavaScript file in your second snapshot. Okay. The first commit is already done as I told you but we will not be committing this file because it has some blunders, some errors that we accidentally made in the JavaScript file. So we will not be committing this file into a second snapshot. Okay. So this is because we definitely don't want to introduce the errors that we made in this JavaScript file in our second snapshot or in a second commit. And that is why the Git architecture which I will be explaining in this video comes into picture to solve this problem. Now we basically have three areas in the Git architecture. The very first one is the working directory. Then we have something called as the staging area or also called as the index area in which you will add or you will stage those files that you want to go, that you want to make wrapped up in the next commit. Now, if you don't want some of the files to go to the next commit, just simply don't add those files into the staging area and those specific files will not go or will be omitted from the next commit as simple as that. Now let us discuss about, now let us assume we had one HTML file. I will take up some space here. So let us assume this is a folder. Here we had one HTML file, then a uh, one CSS file and one JavaScript file. So we are having three files in which suppose, again, suppose you accidentally introduce some errors. So what I would do is I would add, so this JavaScript file again has, has some blunder mistakes that we accidentally made. This is flawless. This is also flawless. Okay. So you accidentally introduce some errors. Now what would I do is I would add HTML and CSS files into the next commit. Okay. Means these files will go into something called as our staging area. So we will be adding these two files in our staging area, but we will omit the JavaScript file. So these two files will go into our next commit since they are working perfectly for what was desired and we would, uh, we would leave the JavaScript file. We will rectify the errors before making them wrapped up in the next commit that were present in that. Okay. Before letting it go to the staging area and hence subsequently in the next commit. So what we would do is we will push the HTML file, the CSS files from the working directory 
So here is a working directory. We know that HTML file and CSS file are working perfectly. So we will stage them to the staging area. Okay. And uh, we will show them to the people who wanted to see our design. So we would want to stage the HTML files, the CSS files, but not the JavaScript file. Okay. Since it has some blunders in it, we would rectify them first before staging the JavaScript file. Now again, let us understand what this commit thing is. Okay. You might be wondering what actually is commit. So this commit thing is something that we discussed. It means a snapshot. Okay. So we have already created the version one that we are working on and we will gradually be improvising version one to make the version two. So we will be adding the HTML file and the CSS file to the staging area. So you have staged both the HTML and CSS files, but you would not want to stage the JavaScript file because again, I tell you that we did a blunder in that. Okay. So once you have staged both the files, you can easily commit them to your Git repository. So after staging, you will be able to commit that to your local repository using something called as Git commit, which we will, uh, we will understand practically in the next video. Okay. Now you must be wondering what is this Git repository thing? Okay. So a local repository, which is the Git repo, what this is. Okay. To understand this, uh, there, uh, whenever you make a repo in your, uh, in your project, you're making, uh, assembling that, assembling those files in a Git repository, there is something called as dot Git file, which is a hidden file that is present in your Git repository. Okay. This dot Git file will contain all the data regarding the commits, like the first commit that we made, C1 commit, C2 commits, all the subsequent commits that we will be making. It has the data in it, the latent form stored in this dot Git hidden file. Okay. And uh, what we have done here is that all the commits that we made, this will be managed by the hidden dot git file and the responsibility of git will be to take out the proper version of your interface into your working directory based on your command okay so if you direct git to show all those files that you committed a week back it will show the exact structure of the files that you had a week back this does not mean that you have lost all your files uh, all the new files that you made you can access them as you used to do so this will get crystal clear once we will do this together. So as a second conclusion, we have the three stages in our architecture. So the first one is the working directory. The second one is the staging area. And the third one is the Git directory, which is the repository. So again, as a side note, staging means that we are preparing the files so that they can go into the second commit into the next commit that we will be making. So we are staging these files. We are preparing them. HTML files, CSS file, because they are working flawlessly, we are staging them. And they will go into the next commit in the next snapshot. Now staging is this intermediate area, which is sandwiched between the working directory and the local repository. Okay. So though it's an intermediate area, we can directly commit the files from the working directory to the git repository directly but we should not do so because there is a certain mechanism that this staging area is performing and we will eventually be devoid of the benefits that the staging area is providing us if we commit the file directly from working directory to the local repository so if we stage them we will be able to easily make a bird eye view of our files and will be able to stage our files that will go in the next commit Okay, so this is all about the Git three tire architecture workflow. In the next video, we will discuss the how we can create a Git repository. We'll write some code. We'll see how we can track the changes, how we can add the files to the staging area. We only need to remember these three, four commands that you need to know for performing this pipeline for our for managing our projects. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.